Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Today join me as I continue to make my home a forest haven fit for a fairy, share with you some of my recent antique finds and organise a new craft space revamping my old bureau. So sit back, relax and step into the enchanted woods with me. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am in the Fairy Burrows. I found this place a year ago so I only thought it right to come back here today. It's full of these mysterious mounds that I now think are the fairies' homes. I am in the woods today to tell you the story of the past three weeks. Since Ostara I have been full of this amazing creative energy and I've just embraced it and just like the forest has a wonderful transformation every year and lovely makeover that's exactly what I've done to my home. I just don't know what came over me I just had to <laughs> just had to make it over but I'm so happy with the results and I can't wait to share with you today what I've done. I guess it all started about a month ago when I wasn't very well and I was downstairs sleeping for a couple of days and I just stared at the walls and I stared around the room and I thought I can do better than this. <laughs> it started with just a couple of odd jobs so the first thing I wanted to do was just sort out my tree. It was just lacking realism. Even though it's a tree in a home, I mean we all want a tree in a home let's face it, but this tree needed a little bit more realism so I painstakingly had to remove all the lights that hadn't worked, bear in mind, for about two years so I had to do that job first and the ivy on it was just not giving me like an enchanted wood growing vine ivy. The ivy here, it's stuck to the tree so that's exactly what I did. I stuck the ivy and I cut it into long strips and I placed it onto the tree. After I'd finished building up the ivy I then got out my paints and painted the stems brown along with dry brushing the leaves of it too just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look well as realistic as I could really. Then I took that same kind of brown colour and I started to fill in little bits on the tree that just didn't really look right. I needed them to just pop out a little bit more and I don't think I did a very good job in the first place to be honest of painting that tree because it was quite quick and impulsive so this time I went back and I did it properly like my granddad used to say if a job's worth doing it's worth doing properly and I need to listen to that advice a lot more. <laughs> So the next thing I wanted to do was just give my home more of an aesthetic, moody feel. And what I mean by that is a lot of people style their home on how much light they can bring in, how spacious it will look. For me, I'm kind of the opposite of that. My goal is I want my home to be as cosy as possible. My style has kind of changed and moulded over the years, so now I'd say it is vampire gothic chic mixed with woodland goblin core. So that's what I wanted to create in my home and I found the most beautiful colour and I cannot get over how beautiful it is. Yes it is green, it is this wonderful dark green colour but this green just speaks to me in so many ways because it is the colour of nature, it is the colour of evergreens, 
it is the colour in nature that is prominent all year round and it makes me feel connected to nature but also it makes me feel cosy and cute and I just wanted to basically paint everything. If I owned the house I would paint all the walls this colour. <laughs> just like the colour of this holly bush. But before I could do anything, I had to take down my winter decorations that have been up for almost two years now. Last year I painted my stairs this light green colour, but I wasn't feeling it at all. I see this staircase as a bit of a feature in itself, so I wanted it to be a darker colour to draw the room in to make it look more cosy, but it wouldn't make the room look too small as it has a lighter colour on the wall behind it. The colour started off looking quite light, which is what I was afraid of, but three coats later, it was transformed. A really earthy, deep green, and I never thought this 1980s staircase could become such a feature. Back into the woods, and I decided to explore the fairy burrows, the whimsical, bright, mossy forest that inspires my personality and my home to be so quirky. But I decided to move through the forest to another wood, this time a fir wood. The trees here stand tall, so elegant and proud with their evergreen colours. But the deeper I went into the fir forest, the darker it got, and all of these different atmospheres is what I want to create in my home, whimsical, elegant and dark. Here in the dark wood lies this twisted old yew tree. It was also very overcast, so it created the perfect dark lighting. Okay, so I had to move because it looks like it's going to rain, but also I had to take you to the darker, more mysterious area of the woods, which is underneath the secret yew tree, just because of the vibes that we're trying to create here. And this is perfect oh my gosh look at the lighting right now along with the stairs there's a couple of things that I also wanted to change at home and I ordered something very very special but hadn't come yet but because this is my first home a lot of the items that were given to me were just like passed down from other people although I am very grateful for the items I have received they are not particularly my style so what I'm doing kind of like over the years when I can afford to but also when I find the right pieces I am bringing them in and replacing them and selling these other ones on one of them is the TV cabinet I think everyone starts off in life with this same glass TV cabinet I don't know why I just have this feeling everyone does and although I love it it just doesn't give off fairy woodland vibes and I actually <laughs> got another one from my sister who gave me the first one in the first place and this one that she gave me was just perfect it was wooden and it had a cupboard to store things away and you can't see any of the wires that are hiding underneath it but it was just a little too light i have wood in my home this kind of like darker orangey brown color and i feel like it's just the most perfect very home wooden colour, if you understand what I even I'm talking about. <laughs> so of course I had to stain it and thankfully it was already unprepped for staining and it came out really well.
wow this looks very dark <laughs> so continuing with the makeover i told you i bought something very special and it actually is somewhat of a dream of mine and always has been to own this item of furniture it's somewhat of a luxury too so i've been saving up for a little while now and i found the most perfect one i just find that when I try and look for something and I'm fixated on something, I can never find what I'm looking for. So just off the cuff, I saw it and it is a dream come true. And it arrived on Wednesday morning and I just had to put it together. Oh. Do not cut content and baking with sharp instruments. That's a shame. So this is my chaise long <laughs> uh, at the moment it's kind of not together and this whole room is an absolute bomb but you're seeing this part because it actually looks quite clean on this side because of everything's been painted and things so I need to try and put this together today I actually didn't realize how big it was going to be even though I did measure it so maybe when it's all together and when it's like a little bit underneath this stairway it will look less big at the moment it's a little bit bed like <laughs> Well, of course it's a bed, it's a chaise lounge, but at the same time, I'm very excited and this is like a dream come true. So let's pop it together. Putting my chaise lounge together, I realised the sizing of it was thankfully okay and it looked a lot better once it was on a slanted angle in place. I also got this new rug a few months ago which I turned lengthways to help fit with the flow of the room. I finally felt like this room had evolved into a mixture of the whimsical fairy dens mixed with the dark wood. So it was time to leave the woods and enjoy my new chaise lounge. So it is now Wednesday and I thought I'd break this video up a little bit by giving you a little haul of some of the antique items that I have acquired recently. Every Saturday and Sunday you will find me at an antique shop. Just love it. I love going there with my family and my friends. I love looking around at the old items, items that have a story, have a history. But as well as that, I have accumulated some items from my grandma's house because we've cleared it out recently. And I picked items that really kind of reminded me of my childhood, but also items that fit the aesthetic. So now that I'm done with the lounge, I will share some of those items with you so we can put them around in here. First thing I got was this lantern. I mean, I don't know if it's antique or not. I don't know the story behind it, but can you believe I've actually never owned a lantern? I need a lantern. I have visions of my bridesmaids walking down the aisle with a lantern. So this is the first one I've ever bought and I love the style. I love it. It's kind of a Moroccan influence behind it and just the way it's tarnished. I will be lighting candles in this. I also found this really cool antique timer it doesn't actually work it keeps getting stuck because I thought that I could use it for games or just to time myself you know like use an antique timer that'd be so cool I don't know it's just a really interesting find and I wonder what this was actually used for in the first place also found this really sweet pull out frame at the moment there's some really lovely japanese style birds in there but i'm going to replace these pictures with all the cats that i know this next thing that i got is going to go on my altar it is a family tree 
so all of the pictures of my ancestors and me will go in these little circles. I've had this for a little while now and I'm so glad I found another one because I gave my mum one for her birthday as I found it in an antique shop for like a pound. This one was five pounds and it's the same thing but that's okay because it is beautiful and it's silver and it's just such a bargain and I need to find the time one day to print off pictures and cut them into little circles so that wouldn't be a project I'll be doing right now. This candelabra you've seen in a few of my videos. This I was given to me from my mum but I found it and she bought it and gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> I love it. This is made of steel. This will not break. This is just perfection. Just the way that it twists and turns and all the little details. This will be with me for life and then the next owner, hopefully it will be with them for life too. I just have this vision when walking into my home to be surrounded by candelabras and just gothic, cosy feelings. So I really want to acquire more and perhaps standing ones. Hmm. This next item I found at my grandmother's house. It is a vase. I thought it was such beautiful colours. It says on the bottom it was made in Italy, which is interesting. I just loved the colours at first, but then I turned it around. I felt like it was so amazing as the stripping effect created what looks like trees on a white sky. It's just a really interesting perspective on nature. The last item is actually this little tea set and I found this last weekend. I thought it was just so perfect. The pictures of clovers are just childlike drawn and just give this really sweet spring feel. The tea set came with two of these cups and it says Shelly China made in England. Unfortunately it wasn't six cups which is a shame but that's okay that's what you get and I got some plates so it was six plates thankfully and can you believe it even a sandwich plate so to celebrate I'm hosting an afternoon tea this Saturday which is going to be spring garden themed <laughs> the secret garden themed actually guys I'm very excited about it <laughs> We are now going to be moving on to the dining room, music room, altar, arts and crafts space of my home. Kind of just like all my hobbies combined into one. On Monday, I actually began painting. And you may have known in my last video, but I acquired a new bureau, a new old bureau from my grandmother's house. And it was her and my granddad's bureau. And it's been in their house and in his life for a long, long time. So that bureau is now my new altar space. But I have kept my old altar because I love it it is a part of me and it's going to become my new crafting space purely because i don't really want to be crafting at my altar now where it's such an old antique i want to preserve that wood and i don't want to cover it in old glue so i'm going to save that for my actual bureau which i don't mind getting ruined when i look at my new altar now i see my grandma and granddad and i see their standards and i want to keep it up and I want to be able to polish the wood every couple of months to buff it up. So what I'm going to do today is organise my new craft space but something very exciting happened on Monday because I love white. I do love white but I felt that my bureau needed a bit of a makeover. I wanted to look at it and think, oh wow, that's mine. And white isn't the colour that I feel anymore. It needed to be green. As you can see, I also started painting the bureau the same colour as I painted the stairs, but it didn't give me the warm feelings my eyes wanted, so it had to be the same colour as the stairs. I heard a quote recently, and it was that everything is one 
coat of paint away from being completely new and the more I saw less white and more green, the bureau had the perfect part gothic, part antique forest look that I wanted and I cannot believe I had never had this idea before. Three coats of paint later, it was what dreams were made of. Now the outside was perfect. It made the inside look messy, partly because it was completely covered in wax. So to remove it, I placed a candle on top and then scraped it away with an art spatula. A little tip from me to you. And then touched up the surface with dark brown and black paints, giving the impression of wood before I destroy it again. But I didn't want to stop there. I placed my mirror on top and the contrast of white to green looked a little too harsh. So I asked my Patreons and they just get me and told me how to fix the problem. And of course it was with a lick of paint, plus something special I had to order, which I've never heard of before. And here we are! Just don't you think it just looks like a complete different object now? It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, obviously put that there. I am just so impressed. I cannot believe I didn't do this sooner. I'm in love, really. So yeah, can't wait to use this again. Now, I have taken everything out and it's currently over there, including that massive box that the Shays Lounge came in. So I need to sort that out today. But I have decided, and my Patreons have also decided, because they asked them what to do, that I'm going to do some gold gilding buff and something, <laughs> it's called. So I ordered some of that the other day. It hasn't actually come yet, but I want to put it in the corners and on these little nightmares. A complete nightmare to paint these were, but they turned out really, really well. You have to like kind of smush the brush in at every single angle. So I want to buff those out just like a little bit, but I also want to do the mirror too. So I think I will decide future Arlwyn to do the next clip of the gold before we move on any further. Alwyn. Oh hi, future Owen here. I have got the rub and buff. It's just come in the post. I've just come home from work. I've had no lunch, but I need to see how this works because I'm extremely excited. So I've got a cloth that is clean and dry and we're just going to buff a little bit in and see what it looks like. A bit nervous actually. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh my. <sighs> It looks so good. Oh my goodness. <gasps> wow. Okay. <laughs> that is transformed already. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. That's the most satisfying thing I think I've ever done in my life. A little bit on there. Gosh, a little goes a long, a long, long, long way. So, turns out that you can go a little bit over the top with the gold rub. Although I'm very happy with my decision. I kept going, I kept going and building up the gold. Um, let me show you what I've done. So, I have done this on here, minimal and quite, yeah, quite classy, classic. And then the mirror, I have painted, well, I have gone completely gold, oh my god goodness i think i like it i think i do it looks a lot different in real life than it does here i think it's just seeing gold i know i love it don't get me wrong i love it i need to just get used to it i think i need to just come out the room and walk in again actually and and see if i like it in a couple of hours i think that the setting of it is wrong i feel like whereas it's gray and there's white and it's like a bit of mismatch behind it it just feels like it's in the wrong setting now i feel like i need to paint the wall a different color for it to go i am stunned i think it looks absolutely stunning but yeah i definitely need to paint that at some point
Right, so now it is time to sort out this absolute chaos that is down here of old things. I mean, to be fair, I need to take these things. I need new owners, if I'm honest. This needs a new owner. But this, this is what the chaise lounge replaced and is actually a chair that was destined for the dump about 10 years ago that was from a holiday inn. And it was actually in a skip, but it was rescued and <laughs> given to my mum who passed it on to me. Now, I'm so honored to have had these chairs. I mean, they're completely broken and scuffed now but it continued its life, even though it was destined for the dump. So we're going to sort out some of these drawers and my new craft space today. But I keep putting it off, I suppose, because there's quite a lot of stuff here, but also there's a lot of stuff behind that box there to fit all in the drawers over there. If there was ever a time for really small boxes that you can't fit anything in, it is inside a crafting space because I have acquired such like small pieces of fabric, such tiny minute things I have no idea what to do with. So inside of this I'm going to place some of my most prized small containers that I love so much. One being what I actually placed in my altar and I made in like a witchy DIY video. This used to contain candles. Now within it, I'm going to place things that I need like tools, scissors. <sighs> I can only think of scissors at the moment, but I'm sure there's so many things. Felting needles, things like that. I've got two of these candle holders and the candles have burnt out, but look how beautiful these are. So I'm going to put things like ribbon in there and bits of fabric. They still smell beautiful. They all look really nice on display. Really sweet little heart boxes. These were in my sister's room when she was growing up on her dressing table. So now they're gonna be in my craft space. And lastly, you may have seen this before, but this is one of my other antique finds. It's this set of three drawers and I'm sure I can find something to put in this too. And these containers, it sounds silly, but they're so important to me. And I find when I'm crafting, I'm just that much more invested in the moment, in my special place because everything around me is an object that I love and I want to be able to look at these things I want to be able to be surrounded by beautiful energy When I'm in the right mood a little bit of organizing can be really therapeutic and very rewarding. I did have to stop myself though from reminiscing and finding nostalgia over every item like I usually do when I clear things out, but my mind had soon quietened down as I placed everything in its rightful place. task I had set myself with the drawers was once again make a home for everything. I have a habit of tidying things away in drawers, shoving them in to be out of my mind and out of sight. But then when it comes to finding the item again, I can't even open the drawer as it's shoved in. So knowing what I'm like, I placed open containers within the drawers, made sure everything was quite spaced out and made a home for even the smallest of items. very happy with my progress today and I've just finished now and I've tried to like put everything in its rightful place and things that I use most I put down the bottom because when this is pulled out I can't really use this that much so I have to think about things I use most which is of course the glue gun <laughs> and nature 
and things like my wood burners and glue and stickers so that is there in this middle drawer i've put all my different mediums so i know what i have because sometimes i forget that i own oil paints because they're like hiding away from me different pencils i've just also left room in this box for lots more because i'm sure i'll acquire lots more in the future because i love exploring different mediums and sketchbooks canvases and just paper and things like that and lastly in this top drawer i think this is the most satisfying drawer to look at i put all of my craft tape in order how satisfying that looks so enchanted i like the look of that one but it's too colorful for me and my ribbons and some of my stamps and just sellotape things that i need gold spray paint wooden things there that i use and also my candle wax so yeah it's been a success in the drawers for the top part yeah i'm very happy with this it doesn't look completely satisfying yet i feel like i need to just have an extra video on this and i can just like completely renovate this a little bit more i don't know i'm just i've just got a vision of like trees made of clay branching out the sides and i think i don't know i've just got this really cool vision of what i could turn this into I literally craft onto the bureau itself but everything is in its rightful place now and it makes me extremely happy now Sunday afternoon and I skipped the last couple of days because I've been very very busy doing my secret garden afternoon tea for some of my friends and my family and it was a very big success I'll put in some of the pictures now it was just really lovely seeing all this beautiful food on the table and of course like having a theme is the ultimate afternoon tea. There's no such thing as an afternoon tea without a theme if you come to one of my afternoon teas. <laughs> So today is very exciting because it's the last day of everything. I have set up everything on the table that I need to put around the house. <gasps> Boy. I've set up everything on the table that I need to put back into its rightful place and now it's time for my favourite part and my favourite part is the final touches around the room and then I'll share with you everything <laughs> so let's go for it if I had to tell you a secret a guilty pleasure of mine is object placement I am unsure why it gives me such joy to place objects in the most perfect places and in the most effortless yet meaningful places, but seeing everything have a home is just one step away from the puzzle in my home being complete. I don't see making over a home something I do in a week and then it's finished. I see it as a lifelong journey and a massive part of my personality and a form of expression. In real life, I am not the best with words, and let's face it, I've probably recorded this multiple times to make it sound like I am. So I make up for it with expressing myself through inspiration in the forest, items I find with a story, and through this it feels like I've created a safe place for my mind to just be, whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is, but expressing it makes me happy, and I'm so lucky to have a fairy fiancé who supports it. So without any further ado, let me share with you the results of my fairy home dream come true. I am so happy with the outcome of the lounge. The tree looks almost the same on camera, but in real life it looks completely new and I'm so glad I did it. It was a job well done. 
I feel like a forest princess now when I lounge around my home. A vibe I didn't expect to feel, but here we are. As well as on camera, there was a lot I managed to achieve off camera, such as painting and covering this little window in nature. I especially love how the rug also ties in with the colour so well. I didn't really touch the dining room, and that's just because, well look at it, it's perfect the way it is. In the end I decided to dull in the mirror to the bureau, as it felt too gold. I found a tester pot of black paint and brushed it into the gold to dull in the colour, and it gave the gold an old and enchanted feel. Just the vibe I wanted. And I'm so glad the energy came over me to paint the bookcase, as it now looks like they both belong here. And the colour highlights all of my antique objects on it so well. What a difference a lick of paint makes. Although I am so happy with the makeover, let's face it, there is nothing quite like the makeover the forest goes through each spring. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones. All my love, Alwyn.